believe us in life listen and be empowered as ambassador Francis E.A. Onyebuchi ministers to you the message of apostolic impact God bless you Because even as the word is coming, demons will do what? We flee. We know it's the usual thing with us here. But if it pleases the Lord that He wants to do some spectacular thing, then in line with our time, we contain it. And the second time I couldn't preach, I gave it to my daughter Aunt Joseph to preach. So when the Lord gave me the topic again, I said, Lord, no, 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 no. He said, you will preach it. I wanted to assign the topic to, but I assigned it to Pastor Uchi. The Lord said, take it back. You will preach it. So, I don't know what he wants to do. Isaiah 49, 24. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Or the lawful captive deliver? But thus say the Lord. Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contender with thee and I will save thy children and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine and all flesh shall know that I the Lord am thy savior and the redeemer the mighty one of Jacob if you were here yesterday, you understand that God is doing something clearly. First, Second Corinthians 4 verse 7. Second Corinthians 4 7 says, But we have this treasure in 18 vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on all sides, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Next, uh, medical doctors, God bless you. Thank you for the wonderful teaching. Hope we got something today. Hope we got something today. We are very grateful. God is raising amongst us vessels for those who came late. Our female doctors spoke to the women, and then our three male doctors spoke to the men. When the deliverer needs deliverance there is a truthful reality it's a truthful reality that without all contradictions without contradictions the believer can be attacked The believer can be what? Attacked. So all these, ah, Jesus, no, no. There are things I call falsehood gospel. The believer can be attacked. It is not a crime to be attacked but it is a crime to be defeated. You heard me? The believer in Christ can be attacked and oppressed by the devil on all sides. 
is possible. So all these people that tell you that because you are a Christian, you can't be attacked. I'm yet to see it in the scripture. In 2 Corinthians 4, 7, verse 10, 4 and 7 and 10, it says, We have this treasure in earthen vessel. When you became born again, your spirit man became entwined with Christ. The devil does not have access to the spirit of the believer. You got it? You snort the uh, cast out demons several times. Those demons are not in the spirit of those believers. I'll be very fast. Next. We are troubled on every side yet not distressed. You can be troubled yet you choose not to be defined by the trouble. The greatest extent the devil can go in tormenting the believer is in the flesh. Is in what? In the flesh. The devil has no right to touch your spirit. I learned from the scripture that the devil doesn't have access to my spirit. That is why the believer does not just die. They did not kill Jesus. When the time came, he gave up the ghost. He yielded his spirit. Stephen was beaten the same way Paul was beaten. The believer's issue is ignorance. That same thing that you are facing that you that, that you believe the devil will end your life with, somebody else faced even worse than it and still came out and still stand there. There is understanding that makes you astounding. They were beating Stephen and he yielded the ghost. He said, Oh, I see Jesus that way. The right hand. Of their father. Father forgive them. For they know not what they are doing. Or not. Is a choice. I say it's what? It's a choice. And they beat up Paul. To the point that he was lifeless. And they assumed him to be dead. And they carried him out of the city. And dumped him there. And the believers gathered around him. To bury him. He got up and was found in the next day preaching the gospel. Is what? The church. I'm not preaching just because of the scripture. The scripture is the basis and the foundation. I've also had diverse near death experience. Last year, October, I was almost gone. I was lying down my chest or my heart stopped beating. I knew I was gone. They thought about my wife. Ah, she will be fine. She's a Christian. She will understand. My mom, she will be fine. She's a Christian. She will understand. My siblings, they are, they can understand. They are believers. At that spot, my spirit came out. It was standing before me. And an understanding rank. I saw myself preaching in this place in 220, where I said the believer does not just die, he has right to yield himself and to take it back. Jesus said, I have right to do what? To lay down my life and to take it back. And ye are work with him. And what happened? From inside, an anchor arose. I declared, I cannot die. And I jacked back to life. 
around 12 o'clock. And then tell you how death kept. When that death kept, the hospital closed to the house. They knocked and knocked. They were closed. Pastor that just left from the house. Their number never went through throughout. And I checked back to life. And said, I am done with the treatment. Thank you. And says, then to your death, I have not gone back for the treatment. The believer can be challenged. But if you allow that challenge to finish you, if your strength fell you of battle, then your strength was what? Little. Second Corinthians 7 verse 5 says, For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. But we were troubled on every side. Without we are fighting, within we are fears. At times the believer finds himself in a state we are one. There are battles around him and on his inside are fears. If you have never been in that state, it's a very terrible state to be. I know I was in that state this year, October again, and last month. Fighting around inside. Fear. I kept the grief, but the Lord has not given unto us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Why sound mind? All those things the devil is telling you, feeding your heart with. By the understanding that you have a sound mind, you silence him. Many believers are going about in fear, not because it is a reality, but because of what the devil has fed them in their subconscious. Because of a dream they have. Because of a phone call they have. And all the rest of them. So they live their lives in fear. If I go by the threats and phone calls I get. Then I should not even be around this place. I'm still here. I still drive my car. I still walk on the road. I don't move with security. I'm still myself. For he has not given us a spirit of fear. Are you following me this evening? We are progressing little by little. So when the devil torments the believer on the flesh, then if he perceives fear, he, he goes ahead to the soul. He torments your flesh. You go and you feel a little pain, a little fever. You say, ah, it has come back again. That's how some believers lose their healing. Yes, you can. You can be healed and you can lose the healing. Or we are contending for the faith. That's why today they are okay. After two weeks, they are back the same place. Jesus said, you cast out that demon, it goes out and goes on where? The seven mountain. When it sees no place to abode, what happens? It comes back. And when it comes and sees an opening, the opening is nothing than fear. Fear. The, the devil that arises Christians with this thing called fear. 60% of what believers go through is because of fear. Job was a righteous man, yet he said, The things I fear most as what come upon me. No matter your righteousness, if the devil finds fear in you, he will come in. So if he goes about and he persists fear in you, he comes to the soul. And that's what is called emotional sickness. Emotional sickness. Different thoughts. Not flying around. Thoughts flying around. In the midst of that thought, you, you can even see a casket. In the midst of that thought, you can even imagine that someone has died. In the midst of that thought, your phone rings. Fear. You know, 
what he's looking for is to get into depression and then the moment he moves you into that his home the devil's home is what depression he puts that person inside that home and locks it from depression he now achieves destruction that is why as a believer I always tell my wife no matter what happens around me see there is something I cannot thread with she knows you see my joy you see what my joy my peace eh? I can give up everything in this world to have my peace and my joy because with joy shall we draw water out of the well of salvation I don't play with my peace of mind if you want to tamper it, I shut the door of my heart and the door of my heart against you. No matter who you represent in my life. That's as simple as my life is. Because the moment you tamper with my joy, the devil steps in. I can tell you today, if the devil strikes me and I get depressed, there is nobody in this auditorium that is able to get me out of it. You don't know why. For at that type of depression, you need a higher person to do what? To talk to you. And you all are my spiritual children. Both the mothers and the fathers. There is no Bible verse you want to quote that will make any sense. Because from the abundance of what I have taught you, you are what? Speaking back to me. So that is why I guide it and guard it. I guide and what? Guard. It's a spiritual battle. When you are depressed, you call the pastor. The pastor does what? Talk, Abby. And then at the point, you bounce back. When the pastor is down, who talks to him? I always tell my children that they are privileged to have a father who is like me, you know, who seems to come down to earth and all the rest of them. I'm also blessed with a spiritual father who before I mentioned one, one, two, three, he says, friends, don't worry. Relax. So, there are some things I may want to speak and he said, don't worry. Let's just pray about it. Now, you know, I tell you what to stop, Abby. He said, friends, don't worry. Because he sees me as someone who has reached a particular height. Two nights ago, I received a very long paper. One of my sons wrote for me two, two paper, sorry, three, three page writings. And all that is in the writing is suicidal. And, that, and the son was alone in the house. I got it around 12 midnight. And at that same point, Brock was on his way from Lagos, entered one vehicle to take him to my house. And his number was no more going. I was awake till 4 a.m. I chat and chat, no. Call and call, no. But the next day, we still jumped out. We are still strong and we still preach the gospel. I just said, devil, no, even if the phones are off, you know you cannot touch any of them. You get the point? So if you are a victim of fear, any small thing you are afraid, the devil will use you and play football. But it is ending tonight in the name of Jesus. So if he persists fear in him, he goes ahead to the soul. And gives the emotional sickness called depression. But there is a way out. Second Timothy 1 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You can send the devil back in from your life with the spirit of a sound mind. The devil's number one instrument for destruction. In the believer's life, I'm going to give you the instrument he uses for destruction. Please, I want to beg you today. 
hear and hear and hear and hear and hear and hear and hear me the devil's number one instrument against the believer is not sin it's not what sin did you hear me huh leave this religiosity God's obliques search the scripture search the bible that's why it's given to us for us to study search the devil's first instrument against you is not sin that is why even the most righteous believer suffer some things the devil's number one instrument against the believer is fear that is why our salvation and redemption is by faith the moment you shift your ground from faith the devil strikes you if you like be the most righteous now when you see some righteous believer suffering things they should not suffer and they carry about themselves sin consciousness than to deal with faithlessness Should I be most listening to you? There's a part of the gospel that, that I think that at times we are scared to teach about. Come. Come. Let's just stay here. This is my son. Oh. Huh? my son by the virtue of covenant is that true is that true the son where the believer became a Christian by the virtue of what covenant we are in a covenant relationship with God through Christ are you aware and my son wrongs me give me a small slap my own sharp husband. Give me no, just give me some stuff. And now I am angry. You get now? As I am angry, he's asking me, you know, be telling me sorry. And I'm saying no. I am what? I'm angry, right? Does the slap? Does the mistake? Does what he did to me? Stop him from being my son. That is what believers don't know. Now see what happens. As he is, you know, asking me for forgiveness, he does not know I've already forgiven him. You get the point? Even if he does not ask me for forgiveness, I am representing God now. I am very angry with him for sin against me. Sorry, please, don't be friend that. And this is the devil. You get the point now? comes to attack my son just 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 come to pull him i hit him out i have issue with my son you have no right to interfere that is part of what salvation gave to us that does not sound like what you hear nothing like because I sinned God handed me over to the devil is a lie it is not the bible for the devil to have access to this one as he has asked me for forgiveness he does not know I have forgiven him you get the point now so the devil does not just come to drag him the devil begins to feed his mind with doubt that I have not forgiven him because the devil wants to destroy his life you get the point now so as the devil keeps on feeding his heart with doubt his strength is being weakened before you know it the attack the devil wants to hit on him because the faith is weak the devil now gets hold of him that's why the Bible said to us submit yourself under the mighty hand of God 
resist the devil what is his submission he is still my soul all i need me is father and son i cannot because he wronged me watch the devil deal with him he's a lie there is not the scripture you can go back that is a part of the gospel that at times we are what scared so some people don't take it to the extreme you get it right now now those who teach the extreme grace we say that because he sinned against me you get it now he doesn't need to forgive he do, it doesn't matter i am not in good i'm not happy about what he did but what he did never stopped him from being a son he is still what a son a mistake will not tarnish the covenant relationship what stops him from being a son is any day he looks at me and say you cease to be who my father god displayed this with with us based on moses moses sinned against god he hit the rock and what i came out and what happened and god said for this you will enter where the promised land so the, the devil heard you won't enter the promised land therefore god is angry with him and then when moses died the devil came to do what to claim the body of moses after all he, the last thing he knows is that god is angry with moses but doesn't know that's that's why when we say leave me at the altar with my father i have settled with the one who i said who who i messed up i have settled with the one who I sinned against I owe the devil no apology at the place of my sin please who I wounded is Christ and I've made what peace so this is the understanding now hear me now this is how the believer gets his freedom if you discover that possibly you fell into one or two things you get now or a sin maybe you caught a disease or possibly you, you are being attacked and every place you go to they will keep on saying eh, see what god showed me how you're saying let me tell you there is no god that's revealing that nonsense it is the spirit of deception if you confess your sin to jesus he forgives he cleanses it he does not remember it again he does not carry it to god and give to somebody else Did you get me this evening? Huh? That's what I'm talking about. The believer's word. Authority in Christ. That's why the moment you find out that you're going, of course you do what? Get yourself back. That you can have full authority. Our mothers, you are here, right? If you beat your child now, and he runs out, eh? you know, maybe my like about the Nazi now, then where's my nazi somebody else i don't with my what will you do no tell me now no let him die because don't let hold your boy the love god had for us is much more than that which a mother has for the child are you getting me so all this religion thing that keeps people in bondage set yourself free from it i will bless this evening so the number one problem of the believer is not sin. For the believer has nothing first to do with sin first. If you're always talking about sin, 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 you create your atmosphere to keep falling into it. When everything is sin before you, even what is righteous becomes sin. Praise God. Are we following? when the who deliverer needs deliverance the greatest deliverance is not for them that say i are we are 50. the greatest is revelation truth from the scripture so the devil's number one instrument number one is fear fear job said the pain I fear most has what? 
come upon me. You will indeed by faith stand on faith. Stand on faith. The moment you shift your ground from faith, you have shifted into sin. And if you check before you fall into any attack, check how it goes. The devil's goes first with what? Fear. He brings things forth that will make you what? Afraid. Before any of the devil's attacks succeed in your life, most times he gives you a night dream, a very bad dream, to make you expectant of something bad in the day. When the stuff now begins to happen in the day, then to rebuke it, you say, Ah, this is what God showed me. God never showed you that. You were already expecting it, and it now happened. The devil weakened your faith so that he can manifest. Are you following? Please, you can still be a proper Christian, righteous. And still yet a slave of fear. Just like Job. The thing that fear most has come upon me. Then the second instrument the devil uses against the believer is sin. First, fear. Secondly, sin. Why in the university there is this mode of the cycle she that was going on that was killing the spirit empowering the flesh you can cover everything sisters you must what you will cover what your head no earring no makeup no this yet the mental which is a spirit is in bondage Praise God. Sin and sin consciousness. That's a devil's second to sin and sin consciousness are two different things. Sin. When the believer standing on faith goes ahead to compromise, he's opening the door for an attack. Sin is compromise against the holy order you are standing on faith and you are opening the door for who? the devil to come Colossians 3 verse 5 mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth for the occasion of limbness inordinate affections evil things covetousness which is idolatry any kind of sin no matter how small and how less it appears to you is the slayer of divine destiny sin empowers the devil and gives him leverage to attack the believer sin does not guarantee the defeat of the believer when we grow up more we can teach some of these things more are you getting me at all huh now what is sin consciousness hey, let me not do it in case if it is sin hey, let me not do it in case if it is sin you can eat it, you know. Guys, you are living in fear. To the pure, all things are pure. To the unclean, all things are what? Unclean. A lady paints her finger, paints her mouth, leaves her hair open, wears trouser, and you call it what? Sin. It is sin. Some of you call it Ungongondi Egyptian. They don't 
then look and go like, about fighting Tuja wars. It is only what? And this is a sin. Take you away. And the law caused them. The, and that is why their lives also represent those things. <laughs> Amen. Religion has dealt with. Many people are in bondage thinking they are freedom. Staying in the will of God is the key out of sin. How can staying in the will of God be the will? Be the way out of sin. Let's see first Thessalonians 4 verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Stay in the will of God. What does God demand from my life daily? To live a life that will please Him. If you are desperate to please Him, there are certain things that will not overtake your life. And then among those who will tell you, the righteous can miss it, but get himself back. You heard me? I still believe and still practice spotlessness. But I want to beg you, please. As we stand on spotlessness and sanctification, go ahead to know that the one who stole the money and the one who told a lie are all going the same place. Did you hear me? Because some things you call righteousness is self-destruction. We have been saved. Have you been saved? Have you been saved? We are still being saved. How? The Spirit of God keeps on renewing our lives. Be a transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. As you keep contending for the faith. Looking for the bad faith and good will of God to do. And when he shall finally come, we shall be saved. We have been saved. We are being saved and we shall be saved. Amen. Let's run, please. I have to take a time to explain it because these are the area devil, cages Christians. Someone committed an abortion 15 years ago and she gets married. Pastor, you know, she's having issue with what? With conception. And then they are saying it is what? God, God is holding you, caging you. I got a call today from UK about a young man who got married, lost the lost the child on December, and then surprisingly, he was in school. So he asked wife to come over to UK. The wife came over to help him to do some things now, and then it has now worked. So during the period, I think there was a seed he, he made a vow to God in a church he couldn't redeem, and is yet to redeem. You get the point now? So now at the place of prayer, five pastors have told him that it is what? That it is that seed that has vowed until he redeems it, the wife will not conceive. Pastor, I have five on that sheet. It's not in the Bible. Some of these religious jokes are not in the scripture. Man made doctrines. What man feels like keeps keeping people in bondage. Ye shall know the truth. That truth that you got to know that kept you like this is not truth. The truth that Jesus came to bring, ye shall know what? The truth. And the truth will do what? Set you free. Praise God. So I told him, okay, don't worry. We have t- taken a particular date and we are going to see the results. I've gotten cases like that. Someone had an abortion when she was still an unbeliever and now she's married, now a Christian. And they say, hey, God is judging you for God is judging you for it. What are, 
if she had only one abortion and God is judging her, what does you at 15? Who still got married and still get that? So that God that we judge away, is that God just? That devil keep on feeding us with nonsense. When I hear some preachers, I say, well, it's up to God. Then the second way, the devil attacks believers. This instrument is ignorance. Ignorance. Hosea 6. My people perish for lack of knowledge. They are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Each time I see Psalms 82 verse 5, I wonder what was God implying. Psalms 82 verse 5 says, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, Ye are gods, sons of the Most High. Yet, paraphrased out of your ignorance, you shall die like the animals. I have said, This is who you are. But ignorance gives you a different view of yourself. Therefore, what others suffer, you do what? You suffer it. May that not be your portion in the name of Jesus. What is the way out of this? Get enough of the word and every looking ignorance around you will disappear. John 1 verse 1 And the beginning was the word. The word was God and the word was God. In him was life and that life was the light of man. When you study the word you have access to his life and that life he has illuminates the darkness in you ignorance Psalm 62 11 let's see God has spoken once twice have I heard that power belongs to God studying and eating of the scripture will help to preserve your faith that well understood by books please hear me and hear me we study the scripture. Why do I emphasize on studying the scripture and other studying other Christian materials? It's because the scripture is God's word to us. Those materials are written based on people's work and encounters with God. Based on their work with Him. And the knowledge of the scripture. There are things that can relate to you that you can what? Understand? My mom has been hearing about healing, healing, healing. Yet when they attacked her, and then she she had a book, right? She took the book, she read the book, she got an understanding. I rebuked whatever nonsense it was, it left. When you see by his stripes ye are here and it is explained one who has practicalized it explains it demonstrates it before you what happens it becomes a part of you that you can remember you don't study the scripture just to know I study to know and to apply know and what apply if I first any issue in my life and I cry to God, it doesn't go. I begin to search what? The scripture. There is asking. There is seeking. There is what? Knocking. You cannot go to knock without having is it sought? Because seek. <laughs> without seeking. You have asked, oh Father in thy name, Father by your grace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. He's refusing. One now, bend down. Go on a fast. Take the Bible. Get relevant materials. And do what? Study. Search it all through. When you get light, you can now come out with boldness and knock. With a reverent faith, you command that demon to go. 
to every area of our lives that we keep seeing some hidden and blush seek one day the needed light will come and when the light comes what happens darkness appears I saw from God's servant Lester Summer that the devil one day came into his head and sat down on the chair I was what? I was wagging his tail and you know making some noise when he came back from a program I was very tired and Lester got up coming down from the staircase because only he was in the house he peeped and he saw the nonsense creature imagine the fool look like this he is no more spiritual he is physical life devil is also physical you are still fighting in case, in case spirit is not older than that Bobby is a physical so what so let's start kind of, you know, look from the staircase of his house and saw he said ah um, I thought it was somebody responsible that was making the noise. Lest I left him here and went up and and slept. In the morning he woke up, had his personal prayer. He was hearing the sound bro, bro, bro. So when he knocked, he said, Hey, get out. Not in the name of Jesus. Hey, get out. And the devil moved through. Through the window and left and shifted the curtain. Let's say no 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 hey, hey, fool, come back here. Go, 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 come back. This chair that you're shaking, you pushed it more. Keep it very well. And the devil arranged this seat very well. And he said, hey, you fool, come back, come back. This curtain that you left through, keep it alright. Yes, sir. He kept it alright before leaving. But that's the devil that that when when after seven days prayer and not be you a rat climbs your body you forget everything you prayed about just a rat just a rat I do tell my wife if the devil reduces himself to a rat or a cockroach match it it's more easier that praise God Hallelujah. Very close to Oputa. We only did call. That was two years ago, so two years ago. That she kept the shop, you know, that they kept for her. That is uh, all this uh, this pot, they kept for her pot and all those things they used to put now. Um, and then with a baby and the rest of them. So she can't enter the shop. I said, What do you mean? Enter your shop. So I cannot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't be called. Just use one hand to, to it is a pot. I took it, just broke the pot. Take it out. When the devil has reduced himself to stick, I hang it with that magic. The just shall live by his fruit. Amen. Most times I will hear some dreams. I will say, see, here a malaria dream. Much, 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 much. How will pussy can be pushing you, human being, in a manner? Pussy. On a real note, can pussy push you? Why not stop the rope going back, back up here? Are you getting me at all? And that is what I have radicalized to. I want to talk about Pastor Man is a witness. We lived in the house. I arranged the house. I, I was with the key. I left. Coming back. My bed was disorganized. My room was different. I said, ah! No! I said, did anybody come back? He said, no. Did you? No. I remember the story of Lester Samra. I said, let's leave the house. Just leave. We came out. He said, lock the door. I said, I said, you fool. I'm giving you five minutes. Arrange this bed. I left. Close my door. 
from the window we were seeing shadows of people moving inside the room when we came in the bed that was scattered was well dressed I have a witness who is still alive and they demanded with me today I sleep and then I feel suppressed as if somebody is standing on my chest I cannot talk you know I have prayed the first time prayed the second time in that my whole room and you see, I prayed first second. it was still happening I said okay no problem there is a way to handle it I now lay down that day did I see if I have slept then the fool came the moment I was facing that day I quietly opened. when I was opening my eyes he jumped off from my body went and stood at beside the door very tall and hefty I won't go up a Jason I was inside my I opened my head you fool disappeared that was the end of it that was the end Amen. Amen. I'm talking about when the deliverer needs deliverance. So little by little, we are getting delivered from some of these nasty things. The spirit of shame, sin, and ignorance. The next way, the next instrument he uses is rebellion. The instrument of rebellion. This loyalty to constituted authority or authority. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. This is Romans 13, verse 1 and 2. Every of its display empowers the devil to become a senior partner with you. In the agenda you are doing. James 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. If you have the issue with submission, whether you are a man or a woman, you have the issue with submitting. Maybe you are a woman, maybe you have the issue with submitting to your husband. Beware, you are inviting what you don't know. You are a man, have you submitted to your or guy in the office? Or in anywhere at all, you are playing with yourself. Praise God. Can a believer be possessed by the devil? Is it possible? Can a believer be possessed by the devil? No. No. Because he is now born again. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. I won't do much on this place. He is now a son of God because he can be led by the Spirit. Now please get this. The Lord gave me this clearly. Lower this place. There is an evil that is happening on earth. There is a war that is ahead of the church. But the church is still playing denomination still playing politics. There is a war that is ahead. The Lord said, put down this and let your people know. When I give you more, let them know. He said, note this. We are in the era of end time savior kingdom imagines. End time savior kingdom imagines. And the greatest attack of the devil now is to attack and slay and destroy all these saviors that are imagined. We are in the era of the emergence of kingdom saviors. And the greatest attack of the devil is to rise up, to fight, to afflict these saviors. How? The first way he does it. By weakening them, making them to become slaves and victims of and to what they are meant to solve. Did you get the point at all? You are ordained by God to be a savior. 
and the devil knows that you are sent on assignment against him, what does he do? He looks for a way to creep into your life. To weaken you. To make you become slaves. Victims of what we are meant to solve. When he makes them victims. By bringing weaknesses. Abuses. Secret sins. Sicknesses. Then he shuts their mouths up. And the saviors end up becoming his prey. And victims at mercy. Let me explain. Most times. What you are battling with. Is what you are sent to solve. And the devil is scared. That if he allows you to become who God wants you to be. That you will be an instrument. God's battle acts against him. So what does he do? Whether in the time of birth. Or as you grow up. He begins to introduce these weaknesses into your life. You are made to fight against sickness. He begins to afflict you with one. So that you can never preach a message on divine healing. Because they'll be looking at you and saying, how can you be shouting divine healing where you are what? Sick. I get the point now. That is why every believer must rise up and take responsibility. He makes them victims of what they should stand against. You are struggling with a secret sin. And you see another believer struggling with another secret sin. You don't have the to do what? To correct. Because possibly that believer already knows what they are struggling with. So if you correct, he says, what of you? You cannot preach on righteousness because of what? Because of, you know that you are preaching what you don't do. Devil is out arresting and caging saviors. When the deliverer needs what? Deliverance. Are you getting the main point of the message now? Most things you are battling with. Most things you are meant to stop. The negative patterns you are meant to correct. He makes you a victim of the pattern. You are meant to bring healing or deliver to the oppressed. He begins to oppress you even before you finish. Before you grow. So that you cannot. The Lord has delivered us. And we shall be taking our deliverance tonight. Amen. Are you getting now? Why he said preach this message? You are looking at me like righteous beings. But you know what you are battling with. We all wear good clothes. Take mic and preach good sermons. But the devil is so relaxed, laughing because of what? When you are done, you will still come back to his word. Then. When the deliverer needs to be delivered, you will stand on righteousness and condemn every kind of sin. But you know you are not righteous. You know. You know you are not righteous. An enemy has done that. When the owner of the farm finished planting what? His crops. In the night, he came and sowed his own. Now, what is the problem? See, when I go up to see Jesus again, I have a question to ask if he permits me. And when he saw it in the morning, the servants rushed to take it away. He said, do what? Leave it. I want to ask him, Daddy, why did you say they should leave it? For we have these treasures in earthen vessels. 
Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord stands sure. Having this inscription, the Lord knoweth those who are his. Let everyone that name the name of the Lord depart from where? Iniquity. And you that is quoting the scripture is living in iniquity. Not because you choose to, but because there is a power against you. And possibly, you are meant to heal the sick. Maybe you are meant to lead a youth movement. I know a young man who has a ministry to the youth, mostly the young ladies. And what did he discover in his life? Whether ugly, whether old, whether whether any lady that passes by, he has the urge for sex. And he has fallen down one, two, three, four, five times. And what is the devil targeting? Let him give up. You get the point now? And when the devil makes him give up on the assignment, the devil can now finish the assignment he has in the lives of those people. When the deliverer needs deliverance. So should he because of the weakness stay away from the assignment God gave to him? Or should he continue to do the assignment with the weakness? When the deliverer needs deliverance. That man was in chains. And every chain they tried to use to contain him, he broke it. And he ran into the tombs and was crying, was always in depression. You know what I'm talking about? Huh? And you think he was just possessed? He wasn't just possessed. For the Bible to say a time that he goes into depression means what? There are times his senses comes back and he wishes to be the perfect picture of who he should be. For if you check, the moment Christ delivered him, he joined Christ to the next city. He became an evangelist. So he was meant to be an evangelist. But here came legions and possessed him. At times he cries. That is what the devil is doing. It's only in the Christian fold that we throw away our wounded soldiers. I always stand to say, even before marriage, a woman, your husband slept with somebody, therefore you packed out of the house. You are very foolish. 100% one. Very highly foolish as a woman. They caught your husband with, with another lady. Therefore, you are so broken. You are packed out of the house. So let him now go and bring in the woman. And not good for him. A house you gave your all to build. Because of what? One foolish lady. You cannot stand to rescue your home. Your child did something. No other person has done it in the whole world. You carry your child around. Everyone hears about your child. How bad your child is because he stole the meat from your pot. And if that child commits what? Suicide. He will still come back to bed. When I ran a pool, this I discovered that over 80% of persons who are around me are thinking of suicide. And then we are claiming we are more righteous than ever. I want to beg us God asked me to do. You are not more righteous than me. I am not more righteous than you. The same blood of Jesus Christ saved you. Did what? Until you are perfect. You can correct me, but please don't condemn me. Don't put me in a state where you want me to feel whatsoever. For I'm already feeling it. There is more war. There is more war coming against the body of Christ. The devil is not going to fight us by himself. He is going to use us to fight us. And he's already doing it. Church, wake up. 
Help me say church, wake up. Your wife took the whole money in your account. Disobeyed you. So therefore you pushed her out. You beat her up. How the rest of them? Is she the only unsubmissive wife? Others who are keeping their own right. What happened to them? We're in, a, in the era of social media. We want everything. The scripture is no longer our guide. Now what? What A did to the wife? Let B do what? To the husband. We are now in a social media generation. We are, we are a brother is scared to come and tell another brother, please see what I did. I'm very sorry. Help me and pray. The brother prefers to keep it to himself because if he tells this one, the whole world has heard it. And this one will say, ah, that um, the Holy Spirit was pushing me. Look. That is what we're facing in the body of Christ. We're facing it in the body of Christ. Because I want to be more righteous than ever. I want to beg us. There are two things he asked me to say here clearly. This is number one. Please! He said, if your brother, if your sister, if your mother, if your father is overtaking what? In effort. Let they which are spiritual. Not everyone is permitted to hear the mistake you made. You heard me? Are you getting me today? All those going to the Lord, I am sorry. Let they who are spiritual Spirit mature, restore such one. And as they are restoring them, let them be careful. Lest they do what? They fall in. In Christianity, we submit to each other. No one has reached there yet. We are all work in progress. Church, please, did you get that? Did you get that? So when he weakens them, or possibly, maybe because maybe your pastor is having a pain in the chest, he comes and says he has the healing virtue. What do you do? Can't sit down. If you have that virtue, eh? God, we're gonna hear no bendition. He's losing nothing. You are the one losing. For the devil's attack is not on the instrument. It is on the flocks. Hit the shepherd. What happens? The sheep scatters. That is what the devil is doing now. On Sunday night, God woke me up and said to me, See, there's an attack coming against the body of Christ. And this commission is not different. Oppression hit the shepherd, and the body will scatter. The second thing that we're doing now is this. By raising accusations and scandals against the saviors ahead of time in order to discredit them before the time and to make those who they should be saviors to hate, abuse, dishonor their anointing just to keep them off reach for help. This is also happening today. did nothing. The man of God did nothing. The devil sends a false alarm. Sends a false word. Alarm. And then what happens? Ah! They say he stole church money. Hey! No wonder. The devil knows that in the future he is going to attack you. And this is the one who is going to save you. So he poisons your heart against him ahead of time. After some months or some year, you get now, he now strikes you. When he strikes you, and this is who is carrying the unction for your healing. And when he's coming around, you dishonor him. And the anointing you don't honor cannot profit you. 
that's how the body of is kept in bondage are you getting me at all church and we are busy claiming we are claiming we are claiming tell me a general in the kingdom who never fell and got up in the scripture even Peter upon who the revelation of, of the church was revealed through by God after the revelation devil still entered him Jesus still said devil get behind me it will not make him to throw away Peter I get the point the son the devil has asked of you I have prayed for you my prayer is not for you not to fail but when you fail and you rise do what? strengthen order so your failure is needed by me to make you weak so that others can be made strong in their weakness that's what the devil is doing in the body of Christ the person that should be saved you ahead you do what? you criticize them let me borrow a leaf for an instance the era of Oedipo is finished Abi. so they now move to Chris Ayakilomi. is it not? then from Chris they now move to who? Johnson Suleiman are you aware? that is who now? let me check this is evil Because that lie you told yesterday was supernatural. Ah! You have not heard from the man. You heard from what they said. You've what? Concluded. And he's a man of God. Who God should use as a blessing to your life. Can you remember sort of ago speaks? Let me put a leaf. 220. When one particular God general was suspended. It is we that criticize our own. And because of just one man, a church constitution was changed. <laughs> we don't know what, who, who, when we take God out of the church, out of personal sentiment and anger claiming we are doing what is right please leave the Holy Ghost to fight some battles the church is still his own what did I say leave who the Holy Ghost to fight some what battles the church still belongs to him we've converted the church to humanistic so therefore it's all about us it's all about us that's what the one who called me who still tells me to heal say I should tell the body of Christ there is more war coming the devil will not fight us from our side he's going to fight us from where? within it's from within it's from inside that he's going to fight us from the people who should be God's instruments to deliver us are the ones who the devil I want to say even if at all they made a mistake thank God they are called men of God not God of God men and they say I'm sorry can't we take them back when a man of God of force and you refuse to take him back hear me he loses no single thing. Hear me today. My anointing was not given to me for me. It was given to me because of you. When you refuse to accept me because of the mistake I made, the anointing will not profit you. That's what you don't know about the call of the man of God. So you are standing on your righteousness, on your glory, on yourself then when God comes to say ah praise the Lord you are speaking against fathers 
who have paid the price, who bond you, when you came home, you have a little revelation. Who gave it to you? Who gave it to you? Who gave it to you? You are a new breed. You got a new revelation. That new, you are a product of the old. It was the same old that raised you. Then suddenly, if it was a wrong revelation, then your salvation was also wrong. You cannot be born again with the old revelation now. Leave the old and then face the new right here. Where rebellion wants to start, it starts with new revelations. And how to know it? It doesn't survive. It doesn't survive. It doesn't survive. Three years, two years, five years, it dies. Gamaliel has said to them, We have seen people who rose up claiming what? That they are saviors. You get now? Start the scripture. When it got a fire lights up, boo boo boo, we just keep on watching. But I say that I am part of the old breed. I was raised in the old breed. Ah, new breed, new breed, new breed. What's the new breed? Yeah, 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 that doesn't treasure discipleship. That's a new breed. And we call it what? New breed. Amen. Don't worry. We are going hard. I want to say to anyone with all you need, God gave Light One City a good gift. In the person of Francis E. Onyebuchi. I am not moved by this nonsense wind of doctrines. You either follow the scripture or you follow yourself. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we following? When you see a man having too much scandal, don't just judge. Take well. At times, there is something the devil is afraid of in their lives. He makes these men to fall just to disqualify them as the helpers of destiny. There is something he is scared. If he's not scared, he will not be after you. If you are in his good book, you then nothing is making him scared about you. He wants them to fall so that they can go as the helpers before they pray. Believers be wise enough. Are you in any of these categories? Are you among those fighting something? Hear me and hear me. Is either you are fighting stealing or you are fighting anger or you are fighting what? Sexuality or you are fighting your tongue or you are fighting unforgiveness or you are fighting malice or you are fighting stinginess. That one is very serious because it makes you a witch to yourself. Amen. your weak point is the devil's greatest selling point but there is hope there is hope say there is hope whatever is your weakness is the devil's greatest selling point the Lord says you as an evangelist and you see that, that you talk too much and people discover you talk too much therefore their ears become what closed against you Devil now says, Hey, now that you are far away, let's now do what? Let's now deal with them. The next group of persons that are going to be attacked. Most you know, see, when we check in the spirit, see, we are not babies. When things happen, we go to our chamber that day. What is happening? Not hey, they say October, November, December. Devil came for music ministers. Most of them escaped ghastly motor accidents. Are you aware of it? Don't say escaped one. Ghastly motor accident with about six of them. Outstanding of them in Nigeria. And we are still playing politics as and self and brand religion. 
what you don't like, go on your knees and do what? And pray. Be careful of an intercessor than a talker. Learn how to pray. Pray for me. Pray for my wife. Pray for the leadership of the commission. Pray for the pastors. Pray for the workers. Pray for the neighbors. Pray for yourself. Every one of us needs what? Prayer. If you don't need prayer, you are proud. I don't think I'm getting me today. Pray for yourself. Pray for the workers. The women that did something you don't like. Pray, God, please do what? Get to her. We are all still growing. The pastor say what you don't like. Please pray. Prayer still remains our greatest weapon. But we have left it to what? To talking. I just tell people, what you have not paid the price at the place of prayer, don't talk about. You hear me? What you have not paid price at prayer, to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray, don't do what? Talk about. If they robbed us of Johnson Suleiman, by that word, gunshot. What will happen? The church does what? Cripples. The people God has placed in his hand to save will do what? Will not be delivered. Abi, that is your own, that's the way your own religion has blinded your common sense. Praise God. Let's run down with the seven ways the devil oppresses people. Seven ways and seven levels of demonic attacks. Is someone blessed already? Is your eyes opened already? The first way the devil attacks believers is obsession. Say with me, obsession. Again, obsession. He gives you something and makes it the only thing you think about. To be the only thing that you preoccupy your mind, spirit, soul, with. When you check 2 Samuel 13, verse 11. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me. Who is didn't talk about? Who is didn't talk about? Not Joseph. Who is didn't talk about? And she answered him, No, my brother. Do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not doubt this fully. Who didn't talk about Amor? Tamar. Obsession. I want to sleep with her. I want to sleep with her. I want to sleep with her. You know, like that is it. I want to sleep with her. Obsession. Some some youths are obsessed with Facebook. Praise God. Even to know and know, our mothers are here, not only you, sir. If when they got friend, God will fail, fail, and no, the machine gun accuse you, you kick. God force the oppression strike. How do you deal with it when a woman is passing? Close your word. It is still scriptural. Leave all those leaving your eyes open and speaking in tongues on a belief. Oh no, no. Are you getting me this evening? Mothers, I, I know what I'm talking to. Because Job said, I have made covenant with my eyes. With my what? Eyes. Not to look lustfully at a woman. You are having obsession yet. Amen. A 
Amen. Your bestie is a female. Yeah, hallelujah. Your prayer partner is a... See, see, she is the one helping me to pray. We are praying. Your brother to cure you. I went it of course. He got a home about me. She like he got a home about me. Obsession. You are sleeping. A part is in your brain. You wake up. Is in your brain. That is the devil testing the water of your destiny. One of the ways to deal with it. Look for a spiritual authority and do what? Confide. If you're a sister, please, I trust my pastor very well. But we have mothers. We have what? Mothers. How can you come before me before I was married? And, 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 and my body used to do me, bore, bore. How do you want me to understand what you're talking about? I choose not to understand. There are mothers in the house to go and meet. You want pastor to, to do what? To pray for you. Transparency of body body. Praise God. That's the first. That was also what happened to the wife of Potiphar. She became what? Obsessed with David. Sorry, with just attention. Can't do without this. Can't do without, you know. Some parents are obsessed also with alcohol. When I saw a lady who was possessed, the only place she feels comfortable is to stay at a soccer way and be perceiving the smell of the sheets. To see what the dark, see, you know, so, so it's not just in sex, you get the point now. There are other areas of obsession. Obsession. A power that is above the person has preoccupied with images. That's also where he introduces that fear. You are very scared. Everything makes you afraid. That's demonic obsession with fear. The Lord delivers you tonight. The second way is addiction. Addiction. A strong and harmful need to regular have something. Strong, harmful. I am taking the cigarette. They wrote on the paper, smokers are liable to die young. Yet, I don't see it because I'm addicted to it. An incurable desire to have something. overpowered by the force under strong persuasive influx strong persuasive strong persuasive even when your heart is not there everything is pushing you towards it it could be drugs it could be sex it could be masturbation it could be pornography it could be stealing it could be lying when we were in school there was this our teacher's wife. She wasn't working. Every morning she sits, you know, at the front. Daddy. She doesn't put her mind. She likes to talk. If you are passing by and you don't greet her, she greets you. You say, ah, ah. mommy in there, whoa. She said, eh, how, how are you? Ah, mommy first said, wait, now where are you rushing to? When they, Mahatma Bashri, they, they don't feel comfortable. Addiction. If they have not slept with someone, they don't feel what? Comfortable. Addiction. If they've not taken one bottle, they don't feel what? Comfortable. If they've not argued, someone said to me, 
until I fight with somebody, I don't really feel okay. Fight. You think he's the person? There is a power overpowering him. So most things that we judge, can we become more mature as believers today? And begin to deal with the root word cause of it. Let the Lord give us understanding. Amen. It could be a restless, constant pull. Restless, constant pull. To, to, to do evil, anger, hatred, unforgiveness. Oh, and they, if there's nobody they are following with, they're not okay. Addiction with your phone. If you don't press your phone, there is no data in the phone. Yet they are pressing the phone. To know how bad it is, take away Android. Give them button phone. They, they, they still find things to press. Addiction. They think they are still on their own. When I started, I was getting addicted to Facebook three years ago. I stayed off Facebook for one year. For how many years? One year. I never entered. Even this year, I have not really been. And next year, I'm not going to. Let me only be at Messenger to reply chats where necessary and when necessary. If you see whatever you want to use to destroy your life, ask the you flee. Help me tell somebody to flee. Help me flee. Paul said to Timothy, flee youthful lust, not speak in tongues against youthful lust. Joseph left his garment and ran away for his dear life. Then the next that the devil deals with is called depression. This one, oh, ah, uh, if we are 100 here, 70 are in that cage. 70 are in that cage. Depression. You think up, you think down. You know the devil is the one opening the book and chapter. You know, but you cannot stop thinking. Depression. In Mark 16, 2 to 5. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many, hearing him, were astonished, saying, From where had this man these things? Okay, sorry, this, I missed it. Next, sorry. That talk about the man that was being depressed by the demon that was possessing him. Please! Depression is not emotional. It's a spiritual sickness. Likewise, fear is not emotional. It's demonic. Deal with it. For God has not given unto us what? Spirit of fear. With joy you shall draw water out of where? The well of at the place of depression, your faith is reduced to nothing. Everything God told you is reduced to nothing. The prophecies over your life is reduced to nothing. The convictions and the visions God showed you is reduced to nothing. There is nothing again you can believe or stand on. You begin to question what you believe. And depression, when the devil gives depression, one of the first keys he does is to withdraw you from those who will bring you out of it. I've handled cases. You get a point now? He withdraws you. And this is one of the devil's major plays. And when he takes you there and keeps you there for a long time, depression, depression, negative depression, but depression is accompanied with a heart attack, heart disease, blood issue, distress. And at times, madness. That's how some persons become mad. You lose your mind. Depression. When you've 
also you begin to feel pain in your chest. That will introduce both ulcer, high blood pressure. You get now, and the moment you are depressed, you don't see anything good in anything. You only see the negative areas. Even the miracles you told God, I'm so grateful about, now becomes nothing before you. You are under the attack of the devil. What is the key out? What first take yourself out? Look for someone who you trust and open up. Don't stay back in your house to pray, please. You get the point now? The moment you take yourself out of that room and you get someone who you are speaking out to, you know what happens? There is a cage over you. As you are speaking out, you are unlocking that word cage. You are emptying that content that the devil gave to you. And when the person begins to speak to you the word of God, you get and his human advice. What happens? Freshness does what? Begins to come. That big thing you are carrying on your head and on your heart does what? Becomes reduced. Are you getting me, believers? Am I being real to us today? These things are real. These things are clear. At times, my daughter will call me, Daddy, I'm very depressed. I say, Please, who do you trust? Please travel. At times, I send transport. Leave your location. Go to somewhere you'll be happy. Get the point now? Spend some time. Free up your heart. Free up your head. Because the devil, the moment, the moment he disconnects you with the person who is meant to be a help to you, he kills you. At the place of depression, that person you have the highest anger against is most times the one who is meant to save you. The devil places that anger. Reminds you how she was so wicked to you so, so time. Because he is scared that when you get to her or to him, he has the right answer. He has the right word. Amen. Church, are we following? Depression. 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 Never joyful. You see some believers never joyful nothing makes them laugh they are never happy no difference when they are happy and when they are angry you cannot predict them they call it mood swing please most of these mood swings are demonic swings mood swing will last for 24 hours and that's not mood swing Every single week, all the question there again. Praise God. Very serious. Demonic swings. You think you are free. You are not free. Lose yourself. As you take a step, pray in the Holy Ghost. Remind yourself how faithful God has been. Depression cannot continue without, without devil opening some yesterdays for you. Tell he shows you the yesterday you cannot correct in order to close your eyes to the tomorrow you are meant to make great. One of the instruments of depression is past mistakes. Past mistakes. You cannot change it. It has happened yet you are dwelling on it. On a regard in Atanami, but yet you are still there. Oh, sir. Forgetting those things which are behind, I do what? I press on. I press on. God is always the God of new things. He is never in the old. Do you hear me? Never where? In the old. No matter how it has become. Remind yourself, I will do a new thing. God is never in your past. He's never in your yesterday. He is in your present and in your future. Don't wound yourself about 
the yesterday you cannot correct. You married a wrong husband. You married a wrong wife. Your child fell in school. Things did not work out. The person disappointed you. There is no money again. You had a miscarriage. This happened to you. Things you cannot correct, yet you are still mourning about it. You were raped many years ago. So therefore, you are still mourning the rape with you today. You think you are okay. I, I, I don't know why God is putting this words in my mouth. And you think it's medical. It is not medical. It is all about money. I have seen the rich commit suicide. Are you getting me? I have seen those who have the children, who have the money, who have everything, still do what? Die! Whatever it is that makes those who you think are okay to think of killing themselves. Is it natural? It is not. It is not. It is not. Most of the one goes face money to you know to is it clinical um, psychologist and then it talks and talk. Yet not is happening. And when the person just comes, most people who are depressed, when I look at them, I see a short monkey by their side. The demon that is oppressing them. And I said, depression will never leave you without a heart issue, without a blood issue, without a pain. He must leave you with a disease, not the disease in the body. And then it makes you so much angry. So the moment you are angry, you want to speak, you feel the pain in your chest. Praise God. Deal with depression. Don't deal with it standing on the, the inside the room to kabash. Move out first. You can is deep. Then he presses you. As long as you are inside the deep, that room is what? He's pressing you. The first key is not to speak in tongues. Open that door. That cage will lock yourself. Come out of it. Tell someone. Tell someone who is responsible, who has faith. Not only Kai, this my headache is getting me now. He said, Ah, your own is even small, sir. In the Bible, it says, Through much persecution, we shall enter. Enter where? Sokinaga. Amen. Are you following? Never joyful, always sorrowful, always being tormented of the past he cannot change, and fearful of the future he cannot see. Tormented of the past he cannot change, fearful of the future he cannot see. You lost someone maybe some years ago. Therefore, any small thing, fear of what? Death creeps in. That is the devil trying to put you in his cage. Your child got pregnant out of wedlock and gave birth. So therefore, the elders who are even serving God with the Bible, you you are punishing them with your words because you are scared of them getting what pregnant and you call it advice. Guys, all who try can one nigga man she make them wear buta. Even one and keg. Eji, Eji Bible are cover. You are depressed. You have not left the place of your pain yesterday. Always bringing the yesterday into today's discussion to spoil the atmosphere. That is depression worrying you. You are under satanic attack. Out of the ways the devil does what? Attacks best. I go to the test around 2 a.m. See, I, want, I could, could up to ease myself and I came back. I think of a text. Came in just three minutes ago. I'm about to stab him to death. I'm holding the knife now and he's snoring like a fool. Immediately I called. Said, Yes, now he has been beating me all this while. Now he doesn't even know that he can sleep. I said, yes I said yes we are going to stab him two of us are going to do what? stab him now get to the parlor let me tell you how we are going to do it she said okay at that point if you said don't do it the bible said 
that phone cut. But at that point, nobody wants to hear the Bible said. Was, we are going to do it together. In this one shape, I, I told him that he had been beating you all this way. Thank God today we have him. We have to be together first to save my sister. To save the sister. To save the Christian. We move. She now moved to the person. I said, now, nah, keep the knife. So what happened this time around? I said, nothing. You know, I just got up this night and I looked at, at the way he was snoring and the whole beatings. I began remembering it. She wasn't the one. That was the devil inside that matrimonial room that was out to take the life of that man. Don't know how to do it, but what? I found someone who is bitter. Unforgiveness. They should not let go in your heart. After doing what you never planned, you begin to wonder how they do it. God is setting people free tonight. Are you getting the message at all? The man did not beat her that day. For like three months, no beating. You didn't stab him that time. It was after people have made up, you know, Abik, that is now when the anger came. She woke up, coming by. After evening, I said, coming in. So she sent me text because she planned after stabbing him, she will also stab herself. Are you seeing? Who in the right sense wants to kill herself? So you know, I began talking with her. So I was talking with her. I used my other phone, called the man. He was sleeping indeed. I called and called until God met he beat. I said, See, there is fire on the mountain. He said, which fire? Where's my wife? I said, never dare her. See now, you've been beating her all this while. The time has come. Death has come. Ask God for forgiveness. Ask God for mercy. And what? Just stay in the room. Stay in the room. Don't go out. Let me finish talking with her. When I was done talking with her, you know, she was like, as, as she, she was coming, I called the man. I said, kneel down at the entrance of the door. And as she was about entering the matrimonial room, she saw the man kneeling down. You know? The man held her. I'm sorry. How that anger vanished. In the morning, she got and said, how can I thought of killing man? How can I? That was the devil. That is what depression can cause. Anyone who is depressed is a potential tool in the hand of Satan. Don't shout at them, please. Please, somebody is the pregnant here. A preacher like a man, a man need to possess. You are helping the devil to to sink that life. No. I want to beg you. When someone that used to laugh with you, the face is not what smiling lovingly come down to understand don't just judge the person you might not know what the person is what battling with don't judge me because my face is just looking back don't assume I'm angry with you don't assume things assumption is the mother of most destructions also let's run away from depression because I only did it because God asked me to emphasize on this. God said, this is the key to oppression. It opens gates to the devil. Always of a moody spirit. Withdrawn from people. It is the greatest torment of the devil on most women and youth. And today, men are even entering what? Depression. Most men who are at the, at the Biapal is their problem. Are you aware? Most of them is depression that took them to the beer pal. 
There is the housing unit of most evil plans and demonic store. You remember the, the young man Ahab? Ahab, now you know Ahab now. When Naboth refused to sell his what? Vaya. Huh? You see a man acting like a baby. A man refused to eat food. Because of what? Because a woman. So because a man refused to sell. Yes. And it was in that state. What now happened? I do you know, you know that in the Bible that Ahab was a righteous king. Are you aware? Are you aware of that? Study the Bible. Ahab was a good king. He married Jezebel. He couldn't influence him as much as. But what happened? The moment she was depressed, Jezebel now said, Don't worry. I will put a letter in your name. Let us kill that bastard. And, and the king said, Go ahead. Because he was in his weak state. Don't maximize somebody's weak state. Everyone has a weak state. You know, when you are so down, you are in pain. Listen, don't maximize it against anyone's life. And the fourth is deception. Deception. We are running now as we keep running every time. Deception. Ignorance. That's deception. The devil deceives some people to believe a lie. Deception to believe a lie magnifies issues, sicknesses of the heart, expands a little error in your eyes just to destroy you. Deception to make you believe something that is not true about your health, about your self image about your fear most people that face crisis identity they are hearing some voices in their head you are not good that's why they didn't give you that position I told you now you, you can't make it you are a failure you are a failure you can never make it after you've used it to joke out the rest of them when the devil now sees you in the prayer, he now comes. I told you, you are a failure. You are a failure. You can never make it. I said, it's true. No wonder. You now become the devil's confirmation. The devil now gives you prophecy. Now lies to you. That is true. No wonder the moment he saw me, he took his eyes. You did not ask the person, why did he take away his eyes? The person didn't even see you. You begin to do what? To assure you begin to assume deception. 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 That's part of the way the devil is attacking believers. Did we get up to that one? You begin to have a different image. Just like that, that lady I had to cancel. That was last week or last two weeks. Who the elder sister had also. And she began praying to God, let her not have ulcer. But she began feeling pain in her heart. She began taking ulcer drugs. And when taking ulcer drugs, when she now went to hospital, she said she has what? Ulcer. There's, there's, maybe in your family, maybe possibly, maybe your father went for pressure. Your mother went for pressure. And then in your eyes now, you know, you are feeling some pain in your eyes. The devil tells you, pray back. Which of the hospital will you choose? <laughs> Is it FMC or will you go to you? This happens. Oh, no, no. Doesn't it come to you at times? Which which one do you think? You know, oh, that within that period, somebody now comes around. You know, who says, ah, oh, we talk, uh, can kill my mother's elder brother's brother's sister. She make it on the yoga. Um, oppression. The best thing to do now is gain better get oppression before or get a kanju. Sorry, but what of course make it there until you wish. And now she cannot see. And this is her even entering the second eyes. Devil said, I told you. 
which of the hospital are you choosing? Amen. And you say, that is the voice of the Holy Ghost. We got the two eyes at the moment. This snapshot magnifying little things to be very big. If you're not spiritually mature, if your heart is not pure, you fall to it. How do we withstand against it? Above all, having the shield of what? Faith with which we use to withstand all the fiery darts of the enemy. You get the point? That's how to deal with those things. So to last, oppression. I will just summarize the trick at once. Oppression. An unjust or cruel exercise of authority or power tormenting the body. That's now where physical sickness on what comes. A treaty, a treaty is still there. Most women, some things they call infection is actually demonic oppression. I didn't say some are not infection. You get the point. You get now. You've treated and it is not. It is not oppressing you. The woman with the issue of what blood. She that we said that she has not. She has not only suffered in the hands of the devil. She has also suffered in the hands of the doctors. Many physicians. She was being oppressed by this devil. She plans to travel tomorrow. She cannot because of her health is not okay. She's under demonic oppression. How does she set herself free? How does he set himself free? Standing on the word of God. First, begin believe the word, declare the word, and seek for the anointing that will break the yoke. For that issue was dealt with her faith and the healing virtue. So when you are under oppression of the devil, sickness in the body, you've tried everything for it to go. You've taken malaria drugs, taken typhoid drugs, taken everything, yet you are not getting better. It is enough to let you know you are being oppressed by this demon. At times, you sleep, waking up, your body is so bad. You can't breathe. You can, you know, like your body is heavy to you. There is a demonic oppression going on against you. And today, in the name of Jesus, listen, if I believe in God for that deliverance, just over your hands. Let me just make a very simple prayer. To be free from oppression of the devil. Do you believe? That is the first one. If you believe. And many were there and they sought to touch him. And as many as that touched him were healed. And Jesus was there preaching. And the power of God was present to heal. And a man was there who was son of a palsy. And he was healed. Therefore in the name of Jesus. Over everyone's life and body and system. That you have held captive by your power. I command you get out in the name of Jesus. In every world's heart you are. And the place of depression. In any world's mind you are. In any world's body you are. I command you right now. Be gone in the name of Jesus. I declare your freedom now. I declare your body healed now. For his self for this world. And it healed them. I declare be healed. Amen. Be healed. Amen. Be healed. Amen. Be delivered. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Be delivered. Amen. Be healed. Amen. Be set free. Amen. Every lies of the devil over your life. I judge tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I see the devil fall down like a lightning. Whatever that represents is a bubble in your life. Now within one minute, please.
Can you command that devil? You know where he's dealing with you. Command him now. I didn't say pray. I didn't say pray. I didn't say go. I said command that devil. It's in your body. It's in your system. It's in your health. It's in your heart. It's in anywhere. Out. And the Lord is saying to me that most of this oppression began at the place of depression. And let go back and get and it shall come to pass on that day that his body shall be taken away from his shoulder and his yoke from his neck. And the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. I make a demand. Now, anointing of God, break the yokes of oppression. Break the yokes of depression. Break the yoke of affliction. Let every yoke be broken. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Check yourself right now. God set away three. He said four. He said five. Persons just got free and just got here. Now check yourself. They don't only preach the gospel, they demonstrate the gospel. Like any place you have pain, touch it right now. I'm going to pray and declare. sickness now bring disease and he begins to show you dreams and those dreams makes you afraid you walk with fear you are meant to travel you will not travel again because you are of what accident that is the devil oppressing you no devil sent on the way will ever get you amen no matter how much they are ganking up, they can't have access to you. Amen. And so that is very first affliction. That's demonic attacks. That's a not being whole like others. You can't remember the last time you had your body free from one symptom to the other. From one symptom to the other. From one problem to the other. Jesus just showed me now. As he does. There's a healing stream. In this place today. Amen. Let the healing stream. Get to you. Amen. Not being like others. From one disease to the other. From one pain to the other. Amen. From one attack from different things Lord I make a demand let the Holy Ghost which is the stream of the kingdom 
flow through this area. Let the Holy Ghost stream of the kingdom that the river of life is not just for salvation, it's also for sanctification, it's also for our deliverance. He said, Whosoever that is thirsty, when he drinks of it, we no longer be thirsty. So, if anyone that is sick, when he or she drinks of it, we no longer be sick. I activate the well of salvation in you. Amen. To swallow up every other word in your life. Amen. When Moses dropped his own word, it turned to a snake. And then the Egyptians dropped their own. But Moses own swallowed well. I declare, let the God in you swallow every devil in your life. Amen. There is affliction. It causes pain and suffering. Then the last is possession. Possession. When the devil possesses the person, possession has to do with the spirit, soul, and what body. And the devil can only possess one who is not a believer. So, in case you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus. I'm going to pray for you right now. And you want to make peace with Jesus. Or you don't know your stand with Jesus. You want to make peace with him. As we bow our heads, just let your hand be up and pray with you. Hear our cry. Lord, we are your children. And we've got to pray. Obsession, addiction, affliction, deception, oppression, anything that has shown in it that the devil is using to attack you. Whether it's addiction, whatever it is, for Christ had redeemed us. From the cause of love. Cause is everything. Anyone that hangs well on the tree. That we can receive our inheritance through faith. The devil has no right to torment your flesh unless you allow him. This is why I spend time. When it comes to deliverance, I don't preach. I teach. So you can be enlightened. Deliverance is not somebody falling down and the chest breaking. You get the point now? There is illumination of light. It is revelation. It is the eye of your understanding being open. We are going to do now. There were some guys who Jesus Christ met in real life. In the scripture. But we are talking about what has been going on. On their way to Emma's house. You remember that, those guys? And Jesus came in their midst. 
and was talking with them. You remember? Huh? And they were talking with him, but they never knew who they were what? Communicating with. You read that scripture? And he followed, and, he, and when they got to a point, he wanted to go. They said, no, now stay. Come in. And then, he followed them in. When he came into the house, he broke what? The bread. The moment they ate, what happened? Their eyes opened. This communion today is the communion that shall be opening blind eyes. I believe you have been blessed by this message. Kindly share with us your testimonies. Email us at tamicministries at yahoo.com. Call us 070-605-744-15. God bless you.